the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all of our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. The Apostle Paul writes, when we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. I invite you to stand and we will join in singing our uh, opening hymn, Beautiful Savior. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Marvin Vernon. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid 
so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who've gone before us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we will have our scripture readings. Good morning. The first scripture reading is from Lamentations, chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The psalm is Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and night wraps itself around me, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. The New Testament scripture reading is from Romans 8, verses 31 through 35, 37 through 39. What then shall we say in response to this? Is God for us? Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will he also not, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who, bring us, who will bring any change against those whom God has chosen. It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised for life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither 
death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, neither any powers, neither any height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. People say thanks to be God. The gospel reading for today is from John 6, 37 through 40. Please rise if you are able for the reading of the gospel. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Please join me in prayer. Oh Lord God, we're gathered here on this day because you are God and because you are good and because you are honoring your promises to Marvin. Lord, keep our eyes open so that we always may see you at work in your so loved world. Amen. I haven't been at Good Shepherd all that long, but I do know that when I would come to Good Shepherd, I would see Diane and Marvin here. They were usually here if something was going on, and even if there wasn't a lot going on, they were often here. Uh, Diane was always engaged in something, and there was Marvin waiting patiently. And you never quite knew what was in that look on his face because he was usually uh, getting ready with a joke to tell. And uh, it, it's, it, it's just a joy to see the playfulness that he had. And a, a lot of things were explained last night in the telling of the stories. Uh, those of you who are from Elgin probably know a lot of the, the stories and the types of things that would go on. And uh, I know that uh, even in the, the Romans passage that we read, uh, there's a couple verses that generally get left out. It says, because we are like, like sheep uh, accounted to be slaughtered. And I wonder if that had anything to do with the story of Billy the goat um, <laughs> last night, um, a, a particularly rambunctious goat that uh, sort of got Marvin's goat and he wasn't Marvin's goat for long. Um, we're here today to give thanks to God because we are people of faith and we are people of hope. We know that this is not the end of the story for Marvin. Oh, we heard from Psalm 139 how he was knit together in his mother's womb and that he was fearfully and wonderfully made. We know about how that was. And, of course, the, the steadfast love of the Lord that never never ceases. And uh, that the good Lord's anger does not abide forever. All of those stories and such. The, st the life that you lived with Marvin, that sort of played out. Uh, even if he did get angry, it didn't last long. And... Uh, when one has the ability to look back and have the gift of hindsight, that is a remarkable gift. And so there are ways in which uh, the life of Christ was being lived out in Marvin uh, in the good ways and uh, in the mischievous ways, maybe even so. 
one of the things that God designs and God desires from all of God's people is that people would experience the love of God through each of God's children. And that love gets experienced in different ways. I mean, I was, I was kind of flabbergasted last night because um, <laughs> maybe there's a good reason why Marvin never hugged me or, or, or tried to pick me up, but apparently he had this habit of not only hugging people, but making sure they knew they were hugged. Um, as soon as your feet left the floor, you knew um, you were in Marvin's good graces and his good grasp. I think that's kind of a, a microcosm of what God is up to in God's church. That God wants each of us to experience the love of God in Jesus Christ through each of God's children. And each of those happen in different ways. I don't suggest you go around trying to pick up everyone you meet and hug them off the ground. Uh, that was Marvin's way. I'm hoping that as you're journeying now, you're discovering your way through which God's love will flow through you and that people will experience that unique touch. The, uh, the verse that I commented on last night was not read today, but I still think it's applicable how God is making all things new. You know, in 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writes, though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. And that is certainly the case for Marvin. Um, when you look at your funeral bulletin and you see that beautiful Model A on there, um, if you look carefully at the board out there, you'll see Marvin standing around a bunch of car parts, uh, some of them painted the same color green as the house had been painted. That's the car that Marvin was restoring and restored. And you see... God takes each and every one of us in whatever condition God finds us, no matter how much gunk and layers of coating we've got on us and how much baggage we bring with us, and God takes us and restores us and renews us and makes us something beautiful. We're not always going to look like a Model A. We'll, we'll all look different. God's made each and every one of us unique. But that's what God was doing in Marvin. God made something beautiful and unique out of a life that was willing to be molded by Jesus. Some people say, you are what you become, or what you are what you eat. And I have to be careful when I use that illustration um, because I've eaten a lot of lefse. And I don't know what that saying means in that case, but I do know this. It is important for the family to have communion today. And that happens on multiple levels. To have communion, to have the, the body and blood of Christ is a gift, but to have communion with the body of Christ is a gift. And so today we will be communing, and we already are. We're experiencing community that common unity in Christ. And we're celebrating that oneness. We say that this is a feast that begins now, but it's only brought to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. And so today is going to be a day filled with all kinds of emotion, all kinds of experiences. And I pray that you share those, those holy memories that get churned up as you visit through the day. You might be encountering people you haven't seen in a few years, and that might generate a story that needs to be shared. That's part of what we do, is we encourage one another, we build each other up, and we strengthen one another as we walk this journey. Because the day will come when the dead in Christ will be raised. 
and any imperfections that were there will be gone. And we will be what we eat. <laughs> we eat the body and blood of Christ, and we become everything God intends us to be. It's a beautiful process. Sometimes it takes 80 years. Sometimes it takes less. We don't always know, do we? But we do know this, that God is at work in you, just as God was at work in Marvin, seeking to shape us and mold us to the image of Jesus. So I have this, uh, this, this strange image in my head, thanks to your family, of when Jesus gets there, I, I always envision Jesus welcoming his children with open arms. And I imagine Jesus giving each child a, a hug, welcome home. And I just can't figure out if Marvin's trying to pick up Jesus or if Jesus <laughs> is trying to pick up Marvin uh, in that hug, in that embrace. I said, oh, what a glorious day we look forward to. And so until that day, May God keep you firmly focused on Jesus in the promises he makes in the waters of baptism that this one belongs to me. And be patient with each other as that restoration project is going on. It's not always an overnight thing. It's not always an easy thing. But be patient with each other as God forms Jesus in those around you. And then finally, May God keep you in peace until that day when we are reunited around the throne of mercy and we experience Jesus in all his fullness with Marvin and all who've gone before us in the faith. Until then, God's peace be with you. Amen. I invite you to stand. And in your, the back of your insert, you will find words that have united Christians throughout the centuries as together we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, You've knit your chosen people together in one communion in this mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, grant that all who've been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, that we may die daily to sin and rise every day to newness of life, and that through the grave and the gate of death, we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, grant to those who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. 
God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have the strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and a certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us grace to entrust Marvin Vernon to your never-failing love, which sustained him in this life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor you bear for your people. God of mercy. God of all grace, you sent your son, our savior Jesus, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who believe. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. As I mentioned a moment ago, we would be celebrating our Lord's Supper together, this Holy Communion. And at Good Shepherd, we practice uh, open communion, which means that if you believe Jesus um, body and blood were given and shed for you, you're welcome to the Lord's table. If gluten is an issue for you, in the very center aisle as you're coming down, there are little chalices that contain gluten-free and alcohol-free communion elements. We simply ask that you would pick one of those up if that is your need. And as you go by the servers, the words will be spoken to you. Uh, when you are done communing, there are receptacles for the empty glasses. Uh, if you just need alcohol-free communion, in the center ring of each of the communion trays, there are some uh, light-colored liquid, that's grape juice, that is alcohol-free. If you're a person who does not yet commune, a young person, Instead, we ask you just simply hold your hands like this and you'll receive a blessing. And if you receive communion, simply put them out there and we'll give you the body of Christ. All is prepared. Uh, the funeral directors will be ushering you and I invite the communion servers. Oh, just about. I forgot something. I'm supposed to do the words of institution and the Lord's Prayer. We'll do that now. It was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together I invite you to pray as Jesus taught and you will find the words on the back of your insert. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, the ushers will direct you. We'll, we'll be coming up the center aisle and returning by the side aisle. And the servers may come forward.
the body and blood of our crucified and risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At the conclusion of the service, I'm going to invite all of you to simply go down the hallway to the left as you're going down. And when you, before you leave the building, hang a right and you'll be going into the Linney Center where lunch is served. And we encourage you all to stay and share those uh, wonderful stories and memories. And also on behalf of Diane and Tasha and the rest of the family, you know, um, thank you for your support and for your care. It was really beautiful for you to do that, and I count on you to keep doing that because uh, Marvin would have wanted you to keep that support going. So, Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Marvin Vernon. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. I invite you to rise as we sing our closing hymn.